new day starts in the dark. Why? Why are you afraid to have use your dark side for your new beginnings? When you're working on a business or in life, things will always go wrong. That's the human condition. Look, we've all been quitters. Everyone. Nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble. We all have setbacks. The question is not if some of these things will happen to you. They will. The question is, what do we do next? The only way that you're going to be able to push past the mountain of obstacles that is going to try to stop you is to have maniacal focus, to know exactly what you want, to have clarity of purpose, to have a crystal clear vision in your mind of what you're trying to accomplish, something that you could tell anybody in a single sentence. When you have that and you stare at it all day and you think about exactly how you're going to make it happen and you tie your identity to it, then you've got a chance. When you face a challenge, remember this, you have nothing to lose. Stand up. Go forward. Go out in a blaze of glory, fighting with everything you've got, every ounce of energy, every bead of sweat, every drop of blood until your last breath. Winning is not about the trophy. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain that you will go along the way. My glory, it happens in the darkness of the early morning, in solitude, where I try, and I try, and I try again, with everything I have to be the best that I can possibly be, better than I was yesterday, better than people thought I could be, better than I thought I could be, then claim one victory that no one can ever take away from me, ever. A victory that is earned every single day. A victory of determination and will and discipline. A victory achieved because I will not stop. How you do anything is how you do everything. It's those little things, the little decisions that you make every single day, as small as it seems, that create an environment in your head of what it is you're becoming. Are you a finisher, a quitter? What are you? How you do anything is how you do everything. I've got a little topic now called the four major lessons in life to learn. Life and business is like the changing seasons. You cannot change the seasons. That's impossible. You can't rearrange the seasons. You cannot say, well, I'll take five harvest times, no winters, a few springs, and a summer or two. You can't rearrange them. The seasons are going to come however they're going to come, and you cannot change that. So you cannot change the seasons. But make this note. You can change yourself. And by the way, only human beings have this extraordinary ability to make dramatic changes in their life. All of the life forms except human beings are driven by instinct and the genetic code. In America, the goose can only fly south in the winter. And why does the goose have to fly south in the winter in America? Because he's a goose. He can't fly any other direction. But that's not true with human beings. Human beings can go north. They can go south. They can go east. They can go west. Human beings can live one way for five years and then tear up that script and live a totally different way the next five years. Humans can do that. I'm asking you to utilize your power as a human being and change your life to whatever degree you want it changed. If you want your income to change, I'm telling you it's within your power. You're not a tree, you don't have to stay. You're not a goose, you don't have to fly south. 
I'm telling you, anytime you want to, you can say, I'm going to change my attitude, I'm going to change my income, I'm going to change my abilities, I'm going to do more than I've ever done before. Take on that as your God-given right as a human being to change your life to whatever degree you want it to change. So learn the value of the seasons now. You can't change them, but you can change yourself. Now here's the four major lessons in life to learn. Number one, learn how to handle the winters. It's a fact of life. The winters follow the fall, the harvest. And pray tell how often. 6,000 years that we know of recorded history. Winter comes after fall. Night comes after day. Difficulty follows opportunity. Recession always comes after expansion. So the winters are going to come. The winter of sickness. The winter of disappointment. The winter of devastation. Social winters. Economic winters, personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long, it's simply called winter time. But the winters are inevitable. So it has been for the last six and a half thousand years recorded history. You say, well, Mr. Rohn, what can I do about the winters of life? In World War II, we marched against the winter and finally the spring came. We marched against the tyranny of communism and finally the walls came tumbling down. We marched against the tyranny of the Nazis and finally liberated the world for democracy and freedom. And that's what I'm telling you. It's possible for you to conquer your winters. How do you keep it so your, your dad used to say that one of the things he'd gotten good at and he wanted you to get good at was not letting the the energy of a negative situation or confrontation to carry you away. So how do people in that moment of failure, which is usually really embarrassing, and like when you're failing, like all the talk in the world, if you're caught up in the energy, it, it, it's just, it sucks so much, people just want to turn and run in the opposite direction. So how did you learn not to get caught up in that energy? I, we're people, and we feel how people feel, meaning... It hurts when people say bad things about us. It doesn't feel good when people don't believe in you. My dad always told me, if something ever doesn't go the way that you plan and you find yourself in that situation, don't panic. The most important thing you can do is stay calm, stay present. And I've always sort of likened, I can't remember what, you know, I think it was a Vietnam War film or some other film that I was watching one time. And this sergeant stood right up in the middle of this battle. And bullets are hitting branches and knocking trees down. You can hear him zipping by. And he stands up and he says, hey, go over there, move up. Do you, you need to watch right over there. And the presence amidst all the chaos and destruction and calamity was what saved all of their lives. And I think that presence of mind and that being able to be calm, that you've laid a plan out, you've done what you've done that got you to this point, if something comes up that you didn't expect or that you didn't know was going to come, your plan's not bad. It got you to where you are. Right now you have to deal with what's in front of you. That doesn't mean run away. It doesn't mean stop. It, don't do anything. it means deal with it. Deal with what's in front of you. Move through it. Move around it. Move over it. Move under it. But keep moving forward. Rectify the situation. Regroup. Because your legacy is every life you've touched. And that shifted the way I saw legacy or what you leave behind or what you do. Because Maya ex was explaining to me that, you know, over all the years of watching your show, everybody who decided that they were going to go back to school or lose weight or no longer hit their children or get out of a bad marriage, all of those people who have seen and experienced your voice. And the same thing with everybody here. You have no idea what your legacy will be. Your legacy is every life that you've touched. And we like to think of it. I know you have done amazing things with your philanthropy. We like to think that these great philanthropic moments are the ones that leave the impact or will make the huge difference in the world. But it's really what you do every day. It's how you use your life 
to be a light to somebody else's, you know, and it's how you use your work as an expression of your own art, whatever that is.